From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line on Tuesday night. I am Ben Hall. Very good show tonight. We are talking about elder law, a chance for you to call in and get free legal advice on this topic, elder law. And how do you define that? Well, it's how do you pay for a nursing home? How do you pay for nursing home care for a loved one who may be getting older? How do you uh, deal with a will, putting together a will? What do you need to know? So we are happy to have with us uh, once again Tim Takus. Thank you. Good for to see you being again. Here. Nice to Always see. Always happy to yeah. have you here. Great to so, be here again. Yeah. So paying for the nursing home wills, those are two of the big topics. Yeah, big paying for the nursing home wills, powers of attorney, setting up trust. Uh, a lot of what we talk about is how to take care of mom or dad or how to take care of my spouse and what happens if I get sick and all of those sorts of things if you're a caregiver. We're an aging population. We're an aging population. So there's a lot to talk about when it comes right. to planning for these things. Many people caring for a loved one who's aging right. and they have all these questions. What right. are some of the things you're seeing come through your door, let's say in the last week? In the last week, what we see a lot of, and we've, and we've really been seeing this over the last year or two, is we're seeing more people who are coming in before they're needing nursing home care. In fact, m most many of our clients now are not actually ever going to be in a nursing home. You know, we were just sort of chatting before the, the show about some, you know, some new numbers that have come out and, you know, and, and in some ways they're sort of astounding for people who don't sort of keep up on this stuff because, right. okay, here we are, we're thinking that, you know, we're an aging population, which is certainly that we are. Um, you know, we have all these old people, all, all these boomers like me, and maybe not so much you, but maybe me, you know, who are in our late 50s and we're looking forward to our golden years and are we going to be in a nursing home and all of that. Um, you know, and so the general, you know, I think probably a lot of people think that, well, the number of people who are going to be needing extended care in a nursing home is going to continue to go up. That the number of people staying the in nursing homes The number of people in nursing homes, going up. right. And you think, well, okay, well, that just sort of stands to reason. If you've got this many older people, you know, coming into the system, mm -hmm. you know, then why aren't they going to the nursing home? But the fact of the matter is, is that that's not what's happening. Yeah, that is very interesting. It really From is. From 2000 today. To 2000, 2000 to today. Today, 2000, exactly. And, then, and this was a report that was just released by the Census Bureau. So, you know, those of you who are have a computer available or handy to you, you can, you know, Google on Census or your favorite search engine, Census Bureau report on aging or whatever it is, and it says that between 2000 and 2012, 12 years, basically now from today, is, is that the number of people in nursing homes has declined by 20 percent. So it, that sounds like in 2000, we were just much more uh, willing, ready, whatever, to put people in nursing homes. Right. And now there's a concerted effort to try and keep people out. Right. And that what's interesting about that, you know, Ben, is is that is that it wasn't just it just uh, it didn't just start in 2012. In 1975, and God, gosh, that's like that's ancient. That's for, almost for, what 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. Almost 40 years ago, there were a little more than a million people in the nursing home that were on Medicaid. And of course, back then, most people were on Medicaid if you were in a nursing home. And in 2010, or basically today, the number is basically the same. 35 years later, you know, the number of people that were in the nursing home and on Medicaid in 1975 is basically identical to the number. 35 years later. Now, I, I think a lot of people say that's good. That is good. And yeah. it's people, they don't want to go, generally speaking, they don't, don't want to go to the nursing right. home. And nursing homes are incredibly expensive. Yes. I mean, like a month, what, right. what, what should people expect to pay for a nursing home? Uh, seven to eight thousand dollars a month. Seven, eight thousand dollars a month. Right now, and that's in this area, you can figure eighty to eighty, eighty to ninety thousand dollars a year is what you could expect to pay. Now, if you were in some other place like New York or some of those higher, you know, we're looking at twelve to thirteen thousand dollars a month, perhaps, maybe, you know, that's probably, so one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. You know, when you're thinking about, you know, and, and so here you are, two hundred or three hundred dollars a day, you know, pretty nice vacation every day. But that's not a vacation for anybody, of course. You know, that's 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 extended care, that's custodial care for a person that needs to be taken care of. 
And that's their life savings, and that's what they and, and pretty much you know, they, yeah. they work their entire lives yeah. to build up a nest egg, and they want right. to take care of themselves. But they also don't want yeah. to see it just exactly blown away in a, mm -hmm. in a year. Right, right. And the numbers generally tell us, and you know, the government studies all this because they need to know how much we're paying for our old people to be in nursing homes, and they just basically say most people who go into nursing homes eventually spend down if they live long enough. They most of them expend down their assets to you know, to where they could be eligible for Medicaid. You know, I think the number is, is that, I think the average person that goes into the nursing home and is basically stays there for more than, say, six months, you know, has maybe twelve or $14,000 of money in the bank. Right. I mean, and so two or three months in the nursing home, that's going to be gone. And then they're and then on. they go on Medicaid, you know, and that seems to be the, you know, the, the average, you know, in, in, you know, in the United States. And you then know, the other concern people have, and we can talk a little bit about this, yeah. is that, well, they go on Medicaid or they, you know, they come after some other means of payment, whether it be a house or whatever the case may be. They're right. worried about how are we going to pay how for that. How are we going to pay for that, you know, and, and, you know, they're worried about, okay, I own a house. How do I pay, take care of it? How do I make sure that my spouse gets it? If I'm married or whatever, you know, how do I make sure my children get it? Is the government or the nursing home going to take the house when I'm gone, you know, or or they're going to take it, you know, and, and use it to pay for my care and all of those things that, you know, that, you know, there seems to, there's always a, a, a like a little kernel of truth there, you know, which we've talked about before is is that there's always something there, but it's you know when we get into the details, you know, where we can always say is well there's some good news and bad news here. You know, we you know we we can kind of fo focus on the bad news a little bit first, but there's good news too. You know, first of course, the good news is is that those of you who are out there worried about going into the nursing home is is that the numbers are you know are with you. Fewer and fewer, fewer, people, and fewer are people are going, going and they're seeing fewer stay, fewer extended stays in the nursing home, and more people are staying either at home or they're going to assisted living. You know, which is you know being more geared up, you know, to help older people who need. To be taken care of, you know. So, so there's like the good news and bad news, and depending upon your point of view, you know, it's not such a bad thing when you start thinking about it. We want to hear from people. Uh, basically, what is your point of view? What is your situation? If you have a loved one that you're caring for, uh, or you yourself have questions, give us a call seven three seven plus seven three seven seven five eight seven. Don is on the line. Hello, Don. Hi, Ben. Hi. I got a question for Mr. Tankus, um, and I don't, I don't think he's probably ever been asked this before, um, and that has to do with, is there a legal definition of elderly? A legal definition of elderly? Um, actually, there is not. Okay. Then um, the second question would be, I'm disqualified for Social Security, so you know how old I am. And well, it could be 60. It could be... Um, oh, it, yeah, you, not you, disability. It's regular. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. I got you. Okay. okay so... Um, and this is not would not be a social security issue, but um, I, I'm in the I'm, I'm really experiencing a nightmare in the civil court. It's it's been like a soap opera. I won't bore you with all the details, but I'm having um, I, I trusted an attorney who should not be trusted, and I've talked to a malpractice attorney. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I talked to an attorney other than the one I've been working with who said he thought I had a pretty good malpractice case, and then uh -huh. I talked with a malpractice attorney, and he said no, it doesn't really fit the definition of malpractice. So I may just take this on my own and um, you know the, the acting pro se just try to get a, 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 a have a motion to vacate all the orders in the case because yes. it's and, and, and cite all these type things that, as reasons to do that and I thought without if there's if there's a way without making this sound like a Twinkie defense if I could incorporate something about being elderly as well because there's an element of fraud in this Okay, that's an interesting question. I know certainly about being elderly, and she, okay, she's 65, or well, s certainly she could start drawing. Actually, and some some people can actually start drawing Social Security retirement at age 60. You know, if you're widowed or some other things. But so she's at least 62 or 63, and so now she's 65. And I, I, I'm not sure that um, her like presenting presenting her age to the court. You know, I think that the, the, you know, the, the, the saying goes is that that dog won't hunt. Right, right. You know, um, She's looking for an angle here and, yeah. and presenting herself as elderly 
that that may not. Yeah. Now we, we you know there are things on you know there, there are like statutes on like say elder financial abuse and does she fall into that and if that's what her situation is is that what? But it sounds like maybe she's if she's sort of complaining about the lawyer who is rep, who is purportedly representing her. Uh, then maybe her avenue, of course she's already said that she's gone to talk to a couple of attorneys about, you know, and one, one lawyer who is apparently specialized in this says, you know, look, we don't really, I don't think you have a case. Now, I always tell people is, is that, um, you know, if you, you can always complain to the Board of Professional Responsibility. You know, that's the, that's our professional organ, you know, that's the state of Tennessee where, you know, if lawyers, you know, if, if my client doesn't like what I do, you know, and thinks that I acted unethically or whatever it is, then she has a right to, you know, present, you know, to make a complaint, you know, and I would encourage her, you know, to, to, to investigate that rather than, mm -hmm. you know, because that might bear some fruit, at least if there is something there. Okay, interesting. Yeah, um, Don, is, thank you for the call. If you want to yeah. call in, there's a number, 737-PLUS, 737-7587. Talking about elder law, whether it be paying for a nursing home or putting together a will, whatever you want to talk about, give us a call. Uh, talk to Tim Takis. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.